Hello, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel in the first place. Sorry, I forgot what I was going to say for a second. First off, thank you so much for 4,000 subscribers. Love you all. Seriously, though, like, why? <laughs> um, either way, I just want to say the request for September have filled up, but on the 26th, if you comment on my most recent video with, like, whatever um, fanfiction if you'd want me to read, like, if there's a character, um, if the character isn't already being done, I will add that to the list. Um... Yeah, I'm really sorry that everything has filled up, but let's just get into it. You and Denki haven't really been on an official date. Sure, you've been together for a few months now and you've hung out with each other outside of school, but you never really went on an actual date. With classes, homework, and just the danger of being outside the dorms, you never had much time alone together unless you were cuddling at night after a long day of training. But that didn't exactly classify as a date, at least in your eyes. Once Ashido found this out, and the fact that the same went for some other couples in the class, she was not having it. They were in high school. She needed cute, fluffy stories about her friends' dates just to gush over, which meant her friends not going on dates was a huge problem. So she had managed to talk everyone with the exception of Bakugo, Midoriya, Todoroki, and Yayorozu, and of course Yu and Kaminari, into staying in their rooms for the rest of the night. It'll be more romantic if we're not around to crush the date. She explained, although nobody really cared if people were around getting food or walking from place to place during the date. Ashido dragged you and Yaya Rosu into her room, demanding that she helped you pick out outfits and do makeup. We aren't leaving the dorms, you stated, moving around so you could get more comfortable on the acid user's hot pink sheets. Why should we get all fancy and stuff if we're not going anywhere? Because it's more fun that way, she exclaimed, grinning at you. Besides, I'm sure Kaminari would like to see you in a cute outfit. This caused a blush to make it sway onto your cheeks. Before you could say anything, Yaya Rosu spoke up. I agree with listener. We aren't going out, and I don't see why dressing up for this is such a big deal. Aw, come on, Momo. It'll be fun. Ashido pouted at the girl, crossing her arms. Can I at least pick out something for you guys to wear? I won't make it fancy. You and Yaya Rosu exchanged glances before nodding. As long as I can go to bed right after without changing, you said, causing the pink girl to smile. I can work with that. Time skip. Once you put on the clothes Ashido had picked for you, you looked at yourself in the mirror, smiling a bit. She had picked a white crop t-shirt with a black Nike logo and some comfortable black leggings for bottoms. You had to admit, she knew what she was doing. The colors complemented your skin nicely, which made you a bit more confident in your appearance. You look so adorable, listener, she exclaimed, clasping her hands together with satisfaction. Come on, admit it, I'm amazing at picking outfits. You looked over to her and laughed a bit at her statement. Alright, alright, I admit it. Thank you for helping me, Mina. Did you help Momo with her outfit yet? You asked, to which the pink girl nodded. You heard a knock on the door, followed by the words, Are you ladies decent? You looked over at Ashido and nodded at her, giving her permission to open the door while you brushed your hair. Ashido gladly made her way to the door, letting your boyfriend in. You then looked over at Kaminari and smiled as you saw what he was wearing. The white hoodie nicely complemented his light skin and hair, and the blue jeans he wore contrasted nicely with the bright red logo on his hoodie. He smiled back at you and walked over, lacing your fingers together. You look so cute, listener. He blushed, causing him to laugh. Ashido coughed. <laughs> well, hello to you, Kaminari. Kaminari looked over at her and grinned at his friend. Hey, Mina. She smiled at him and walked over to the door. I'll leave you guys to your date. Have fun. Ashido then waved and left with a grin on her face. Are you ready? Kaminari asked you, his other hand moving to wrap itself around your waist. At this, you nodded and he walked over to the door to open it for you. After you, he said with an exaggerated face, extending his arm out as if he needed to guide your way to the door. He pouted, shaking his head vigorously, as if it would fix what the ruffling did. You do realize doing that will make it messier, right? Well, I wouldn't have to do it if someone hadn't messed it up, he replied, beginning to rake his fingers through his hair in an actual attempt to fix it. You looked up at him and frowned. You had a feeling that the pout was fake, but you still didn't like it. I'm sorry, you said, leaning up a bit to place a kiss on his jaw. Kamanari blushed and started walking over to the living room, huffing a bit. You better cuddle me later, he mumbled, moving to drape his arm over your shoulders. Whatever. Time skip. You and him were the first ones there. The two of you made yourselves comfortable on one of the couches, with Kamanari next to the end of the couch and you curled up next to him. Todoroki came out soon after the two of you, wearing a white t-shirt and black basketball shorts. He looked comfortable, which was made evident in how he sat down on the couch to the side of the one you were sitting on. He draped his arm around the back of the couch, slouching a bit. 
He looked even more relaxed, which she liked. He was constantly alert whenever it came to training, so you found it nice that he allowed himself to get comfy every once in a while. Sorry I took so long. You looked over to where the sound came from, and you saw Yahoo Rozu coming from her room with a smile on her face. Ashido wanted to curl my hair, and that took a little longer than we initially thought. Ashido hadn't been wrong to want to do that to her hair, though. Yaoi Rosu's long, pitch black hair was down from its usual ponytail and, casca and cascaded down her shoulders in subtle waves. You had never seen her hair like this, and judging from the blush on his cheeks, neither had Todoroki. She was wearing a light blue long sleeve shirt and loose black shorts, which complemented her eyes. She looked even more mature than usual, like a young college student. No wonder Todoroki was so in love with her. Yaya Rosu made her way to the couch and sat down next to her boyfriend, who was noticeably blushing still. She had her head rest on his shoulder and reached over to the other side of Todoroki's lap, allowing her to take his hand. The comfortable silence was broken by Bakugo angrily coming into the room, followed by his seemingly flustered boyfriend who was trying to calm him down. What are you angry about this time, Explodey? Shut the fuck up, dunce face. Kachan, be nice. The exchange made you laugh, causing a glare from Bakugo. He looked over at Midoriya, who gave you an It's just Kachan being Kachan look, although he didn't seem too convinced about it himself. His blue shirt looked slightly disheveled and he was blushing when he walked into the room. Now that you thought about it, Bakugo's black shirt looked like it had been quickly put on, almost as if it were an afterthought. Bakugo sat down on the other side of the couch that you were on with Midoriya laying in his lap. His legs were curled up a bit, which allowed you to have some space in between you and his feet. Uh, so, Yaya Rosu started breaking the silence once more. I figured that in order to save money and time, I'd just make a disc so we wouldn't have to search for and rent a movie. She smiled and rolled up one of her sleeves. Does anybody have any suggestions? Bakugo being Bakugo wanted to watch a horror movie. Nobody objected. After all, he was still quite pissed off, and he didn't need to be angered any further. On the bright side, he didn't care about which one you watched. Kaminari suggested it, saying that it wasn't that scary. This reassured both you and Midoriya, who seemed a bit skeptical about the whole horror movie thing. As long as it, the clown's face is the only scary thing, it's fine with me, he said, earning a scoff from his boyfriend. This caused Midoriya to lightly elbow Bakugo in his stomach, which effectively shut him up. I agree with Deku, you said, looking up at Kaminari. Don't worry, listener. Unlike somebody, he glared over at Bakugo, I won't make fun of you if you get scared. Go to hell! Kachan! What? I didn't threaten to kill him this time. Midoriya sat up and whispered something into his boyfriend's ear, causing the blonde to cross his arms with a soft growl. Fine. He muttered, earning a smile from Midoriya, who quickly kissed Bakugo's cheek before taking his place back into the taller's lap. So, while you guys were bickering, I made the disc. Yaya Rozu walked over to the TV and put the disc in the disc player, making sure that there was nothing wrong with it. She looked proud of herself once she saw that it was working properly, which made you smile. She turned off the light and made her way back to the spot next to Todoroki. Time skip. Around halfway through the movie, Todoroki and Yaya Rozu had somehow fallen asleep. How they managed to do that, you had no clue. Bakugo had insisted that the volume was high, which meant every scream resonated through the room. Yet there the two lovebirds were sleeping like this was perfectly normal. Every single jump scare caused you to move a bit closer to your boyfriend, who didn't seem too phased by it. He'd never admit it, but it was taking a good amount of his willpower not to flinch. Seeing that you weren't that comfortable with what was going on, Kaminari started playing with your hair, twirling strands of it in between his fingers. You started to relax a bit more, finding comfort in the familiar feeling. Playing with your hair also helped him calm down, so his hand stayed there for the rest of the movie. Once it was over, Bakugo swiftly picked up Midoriya and wasted no time in taking him over into the right hallway, where the boys' rooms were. Okay, so... Maybe the date interrupted something, but you weren't gonna question it. You were about to say something before Kaminari pressed a finger to your lips. He pointed over at Sh Todoroki and Yaya Rozu, who were still sleeping. Leaving you very confused, he got up and silently walked over to them. He kept as far away from the couch as he could while still being able to reach it. He leaned forward and poked Todoroki's left side, quickly jerking his arm away after. Todoroki jerked awake and nearly set the couch on fire. Not wanting to be the next thing that nearly got set on fire, Kamanari ran back over to you and picked you up before running over to your room. What the hell did you do? you asked, t taking the key to your room out of your phone case. He smiled nervously at you. I may or may not have shocked him with a few volts of electricity. He replied, rubbing the back of his neck. You opened the door, allowing Kaminari to walk into the room. 
All it did was piss him off, right? I wouldn't kill him, listener. Well, not intentionally. He sat down on your bed and made grabby hands in your direction. Now cuddle me. Didn't I already do that during the movie? You asked, raising an eyebrow. And you placed your key back into your phone case before setting it down on your nightstand. Well, maybe I want to be cuddled more. You sighed and motioned for your boyfriend to make some room on your bed. He gladly moved over, allowing you to lay down next to him. Kaminari wrapped his arms around you, and he smiled once he saw you bury your face into his chest. That's when you realized something. The light was still on. You looked up at him, smiling sweetly. Denki, babe, you know how much I love you, right? What do you want? Can you maybe turn off the light and lock the door so I don't get attacked? Kaminari smiled and sat up on the bed. What if I get attacked in the process, hmm? You can electrocute it. And what if I accidentally go over my wattage limit without killing him? Well then, I'll say some very nice things at your funeral, and I'll make sure people know think you died in some really, really heroic way, instead of going brain dead and then getting murdered by some creepy ass clown. The things I do for you, <laughs> he sighed, getting up off the bed. You heard the soft click of the lock right before the what lights went out, which relieved you. Kaminari laid down behind you, pulling you back into his arms. I've come back from my long and dangerous mission, so I think I deserve to be cuddled, he said, burying his face into your neck. Yes, you do, you replied, turning around so you could embrace him too. Kaminari moved to lay on his back, allowing you to use him as a human body pillow. You rest your head on his chest, which allowed yourself to fall asleep, listening to the sound of his heartbeat. Alright, so that's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed. Um, again, I'm really sorry about the mix-up with the recording. I'm like 99% sure I already recorded this, I just couldn't find it. Either way, thank you again for 4,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. Um, I think that's it. I hope everybody has like a great day, um, night, or whatever time it is for you. Goodbye!